Hey friends, and welcome to the podcast. On today's episode, we are talking about fall colors. Did you know 1.2 million human beings visited the Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore last year? So we brought Corianne Searley in from munising.org to talk about all the things you need to make sure that you have the best fall color season ever. And our guest on this podcast, as we talk about fall, which is incredible, Corianne from Munising.org. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good. Things are busy in Munising. How are you doing? I'm awesome. I feel like you're one of these people that I've gotten to know very well and have met in person no times. Zero times I've met you in person. (laughs) I know, but we've talked a lot this way. (laughs) (laughs) We have talked a lot this way, but I've never met you in person. So, you know, soon, hopefully. (laughs) Yes, for sure. And, you know, you and I were just talking before we kicked into the interview about how fast this year has gone. And we are talking fall colors already. Yes, this year has flown by. So, you know, color is actually already starting a little bit, but it's already starting. You can see it on some of what we, the soft maples. People obviously in the last two years, and you and I have talked about this a lot, have rediscovered, or even in some cases for the first time, discovered the magic of the UP, but maybe they came in the spring or the summer and aren't quite familiar with Munising in the fall and maybe how they should approach it, where they should go, what they should eat, how they should enjoy it. So let's start first with kind of, I mean, and I'm not asking you to bring out your crystal ball, right? But like, if you could guess, like when should people plan on coming up to capture it in its peak to the best of your meteorological yeah, to, ability. So to the best of my meteorological ability, cause you know, I'm, I'm, a me- I'm this now, um, but you know, <laughs> this, so this is, this is, is Corianne, this is, I'm a this meteorologist. is, this is what we've learned in COVID is we are all things at all times. So if we I are absolutely, so. so, um, you know, typically this is typically, um, very end of September, first week to second week of October is when you're going to see peak color and even if it's you know very close to peak you're still going to get tons of beautiful color and it depends on where you are at what type of color you're going to get even within our direct area when you're closer to the lake shore that tends to turn slower and then as you work your way more inland that turns quicker so and then of course it's all affected by weather for the most part if it's very cold it's going to turn a lot quicker so if we have a very cold and rainy fall you can expect pretty much end of september to see peak all right and so corianne where should people go how should they see them obviously there's you can drive places you can hike places you can get on the water kind of if it's my first time what what should i do for the fall colors up there so there's a couple of things that I really do recommend for fall color. So one thing that, it, you know, if I was a visitor to the area, I would take a Pictured Rocks cruise um, because from a Pictured Rocks cruise, you're going to see all not only the beautiful Pictured Rocks and not only Lake Superior, but you're also going to see all that beautiful color all along the cliffs. So that's one way to see it from the water. Um, and then, you know, as far as driving, um, I would recommend going down uh, is called I-94. That is an absolutely gorgeous drive. It's the one that a lot of people, you'll see a lot of pictures of the fall color because you come up over a couple hills and you can just see color as far as the eye can see. Um, And then taking H58 to Grand Marais is just a beautiful, you know, leisurely drive from, you know, beautiful Munising over to Grand Marais is gorgeous as well. And you will see beautiful (laughs) color. That drive is so amazing. I'm so glad you brought it up because it's like one of my favorite things to do every time I come up there is make sure that we make that drive because every time of year it's magical, but that time of year it's like Harry Potter magic. You know, as a as a local, that's something that I do with my family every year during the fall is we take that cruise over to Grand Marais. We go and we eat at Lake Superior Brewing Company. We go over to Agate Beach and Rock Pick and enjoy the color and enjoy the peace and the quiet. So that is... That's actually probably the number one drive that I would recommend. And then as far as hiking goes, there are so many different hiking trails throughout the park. One of the most beautiful hikes throughout the park is the Chapel Loop. So you would get to Chapel Road, you would park, and then there is a five mile-ish loop. Um, It's gonna take you by waterfalls, it's gonna take you by the lakeshore, you're gonna see Chapel Rock, which is iconic. That's what was on our quarter for the state a couple years ago. So, and that's really beautiful as well. And so you you mentioned the magic word a second ago, which was food. Uh, As people are coming up there, 
there's some amazing places to eat. One I just discovered the last time I was up there was Captain Ron's, this food truck that is making some of the best fried fish I've ever tasted in my life. So let's start with him and, and kind of like see what else we should eat there. Yes. So, you know, this summer in particular, we have had several different food trucks pop up, which is wonderful because it's a quick and easy thing and it's very accessible to a lot of people. So we'll start with Captain Ron's. Captain Ron's is the only fish truck in the area and it is phenomenal because the owner of the fish truck is also the owner of the fishery. And he is the one that was on uh, Gordon Ramsay's Uncharted for National Geographic recently. So he's becoming pretty well known um, for his smoked fish. And then, so the thing is with the fish truck is that is the freshest fish you are going to get because it came out of Lake Superior that day, maybe the night beforehand. So it's not, it's never been frozen. It's always fresh, which is the huge difference between, you know, some restaurant fish. And I'm not saying in this area, I'm saying other areas, you know, where it's shipped frozen versus literally came out of the lake that day. It might've been flopping around 10 minutes ago. It is much better when it's fresh. And it's one of the gifts of this area, right? Is that we can take advantage of that fresh fish, that fresh fruit where you get it in a store scenario or a restaurant scenario. It might not be uh, fresh, might be 11th on the list, but not up near the top, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. And I mean, you know, if you own a fishery and you own a food truck, you're obviously going to very first thing supply your food truck. You know, that just makes sense. So they're never going to run out. That's the other thing. So you have area restaurants, you know, that are, we're very busy here and they might run out of certain things. They will never run out of fish because if they do, they'll just go get more. (laughs) (laughs) All right. What else should people hit? Because there's a lot of great places to eat up there. There is. So in the past couple of years, um, like I said, we have some new food trucks. So there's a uh, beachcomber, which is right on Superior Street, and they have one of the best burgers I have ever had. I compare it to Clyde's Drive-In, which is very well known. That is delicious. There's Taco Potamist. That's up at Hillside East. Obviously, it's, it's tacos. <laughs> as we can tell, but they are very good. Um, Those were curated by uh, Chef Viega, who is the chef for Tracy's at Roman. So this is all kind of owned by the same group and he is phenomenal, you know, culinary trained chef. So that's wonderful. Um, And then we have Toby's Dog House, really good, kind of eclectic options. Um, There is the Grateful Cheese, which is now parked in the Borders Inn parking lot uh, five days a week. And it's all kinds of grilled cheeses. Um, It is adult grilled cheese. It is um, steak burger grilled cheese uh, and several other things. I've had that a couple times because it's close to my house. This is not health food, (laughs) but it's very good. (laughs) You know, anything dripping in cheese is good. Right. Um, And then there's Rolling Smoke, which is a barbecue uh, restaurant, which has excellent excellent brisket so and those are just the uh the food trucks right now we have border grill being built um it is right next to where the chamber of commerce and across from where subway is um and border grill is actually it's very fresh and authentic uh mexican food and that is there's one in marquette one in nagani and one in houghton already and um the owner the man that bought it a couple years ago is actually from munison so he's finally figured out an option here in munison and is building out his munison location and i mean i love border girl so I'm very excited about that um and then we have gallery coffee company serve sandwiches now they're very good that's a good lunch option you know um I'm trying to think here De- driftwood deli driftwood deli just opened in the last year they are excellent everything is very fresh fresh made they have a grab and go cooler with salads and fruit salads and charcuterie trays and different things that when you are in a hurry and let's say there's a line and you're thinking I cannot wait 20 minutes to get this food you can walk in you can grab sandwiches you can grab deli salads you can grab you know your traditional salads and a couple other options and run out the door with something fresh and good for you so they're very good and they're connected to by george brewery um very good beer if you like beer a very interesting and different brews that he does their brewmaster is awesome and then we have east channel brewery if we're talking about breweries and now they have the cooking carberries wood-fired pizzas there so we now have these delicious wood-fired pizzas and you want to talk about different options they have a um, rhubarb something else sauce that they can put on a i think it's a ricotta cheese and a couple other things that they do on this specific pizza and they make all their sauces everything from scratch 
absolutely delicious too. One of the things, Corianne, that that I think we've all witnessed, uh, especially in the UP, as people discover the UP, is all of these people come up and they're not quite sure what to do, and where to go, and how to act, quite honestly, right? And so, you know, if you could maybe give me the top three FAQs of people who are coming up for the first time that they should think about when they're hiking, when they're thinking of getting on the water, when they're thinking about interacting with this nature up in the UP, how should they be thinking about that so they have the best fall color tour possible and they're mindful to the nature? Absolutely. So the number one thing that we try to stress and we repeatedly stress is leave no trace. If you brought it in, bring it out. If you, you know, if you have a bottle of water, that bottle of water, when it is empty, comes back out with you till you find a trash or a recycling receptacle within the area. And they are everywhere. So it's not like it's hard to find. Um, you know, they don't want you making rock carns that people were making because they say that dest- that destroys the natural uh, ecosystems. Do not climb off trail. Please, please do not go over the fences at the Pitcher Rocks National Lakeshore. So, um, you know, this was a story that was on M Live, and I'm sure it's pretty well known recently, uh, you know, a 20 year old man fell off the cliffs because he stepped over the fence to get a football, leaned back to throw the football back to his friends. And, you know, it's, it's a sandstone cliff. The gates are there for a reason. You know, we want people to come here, but we want you to be safe. We want to share our area and we want you to enjoy our area. But of course, just like everywhere else with this uptick in visitors and this new interest in silent sports and the outside, I think people new groups of people have to learn how to recreate within the outdoors. Um, And, you know, so we're trying to help guide that with some messaging. Corianne, if people want to learn more, where should they head to find out and get their trip this fall started? To learn any of this information and more, go to munising.org. Corianne, always a pleasure. Have an awesome week. Thank you. You as well.